Next on PIJN News, Dr. Chaps reports on these important issues. The NCAA is boycotting North Carolina over a controversial bathroom law. Bradley Manning has ended his hunger strike after the Army approved his request to be castrated, and homofascists are suing a Christian activist. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. My name is Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt, Dr. Chaps, and you're watching PIJN News. On this show, we like to do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. The NCAA, in particular their basketball tournament, is now boycotting the state of North Carolina because North Carolina has passed a Christian law outlawing forced co-ed bathrooms and protecting Christian business owners from being forced to do that. The Blaze reports that the NCAA, who is now led by a pro-homosexual board of directors, has now pulled seven future championship events that may have been held in North Carolina, including open weekend men's basketball tournament games for the upcoming year due to a state law that some say can lead to discrimination against homosexual people. In a September 12th news release, Georgia Tech President G.P. Bud Peterson, the chair of the Board of Governors, said, quote, the NCAA says the decision of its board came because the cumulative actions taken by the state concerning civil rights protections, and this decision is consistent with the NCAA's longstanding core values of inclusion, student athlete well-being, and creating a culture of fairness end quote. Well, he forgot to mention the fairness for women who don't want to have to share co-ed bathrooms with cross-dressing men. What about the fairness and the privacy for those women? The NCAA apparently doesn't care about that. But North Carolina did pass a good state law known as HB2, which requires transgender people have to use bathrooms at schools and government buildings corresponding to the sex on their birth certificates. It also excludes gender identity and sexual orientation from local and statewide anti-discrimination protections. HB2 was signed into law last year by Governor Pat McCrory and Business Insider reports that North Carolina Governor Pat McCrory fired back at the NCAA. The next day on September 13th, he called their decision to relocate seven championship events a political retaliation by the NCAA. Here is the statement in part from the Republican governor, Pat McCrory said, quote, the issue of redefining gender and basic norms of privacy will be resolved in the near future in the United States, but not only for North Carolina, but for the entire nation. I strongly encourage all public and private institutions to both respect and allow our nation's judicial system to proceed without economic threats or political retaliation or boycotts toward the 22 states, including North Carolina, that are currently challenging government overreach. Sadly, the NCAA, a multi-billion dollar tax exempt monopoly, failed to show this respect at the expense of our student athletes and hardworking men and women." End quote. Well, that's the news. Our thanks to the Business Insider for that quote from Governor McCrory, also the Blaze for that report. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. There is a spirit of lying that is happening inside of these men who dress up like women and go into women's bathrooms. They're liars. And that demonic spirit of lying now requires the rest of society has to make a, det a determination. Should we allow them to violate the privacy and safety of women and little girls, or should we call them liars and maybe the government does the right thing? 
And now the North Carolina law is, is pretty clear. It says that municipalities cannot force Christian business owners to open up their bathrooms to cross-dressing men. It actually protects Christian business owners from being forced to help the confused and lying man violate the privacy of little girls and the safety of little girls. So the North Carolina law is sane. It's the demonic spirit inside of the liars that is now being replicated in people like Bud Peterson or whatever your name is, the chairman of the NCAA Board of Governors. And isn't it strange now that they want the government to join the lie? I think that's evil and I think we need to pray against that. Would you take a moment and pray with me? Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 18, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it'd be better for him to have a millstone hung around his neck and he were to be drowned in the depths of the sea. We shouldn't, cut a, uh, we shouldn't help these liars, we should confront them and make sure that they get help. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we do pray for an end to the violation of little girl safety and women's rights. Father, we pray that the NCAA would repent, that the people involved in making those decisions would not join the liars, would not become liars themselves, and would not become the persecutors of Christian business owners. But Father, we pray for religious liberty and freedom for Christian business owners throughout North Carolina and across America to be free to stand for women's safety and privacy that they can open their place of business to men who think like men and dress like men and women who think like women and dress like women. Father, let the spirit of sanity be restored across America and let it begin in North Carolina. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, Bradley Manning, now calls himself Ch Chelsea Manning, is demanding to be castrated. Giving you a megaphone in Washington, D.C. Dr. Chaps will be right back. How is your marriage doing? I want to tell you about an exciting new four-part video DVD Bible study series on God's plan for marriage. In this video series, we team up with marriage and family ministry expert, Vince Dacchioli. There are a lot of things that get in the way of our ability to have a healthy marriage. But with the way God intended it, He always wanted us to see His view of our relationship together. So everything we do when we talk about marriage or whether we're talking to men or whether we're talking to pastors and leaders, it all centers around this idea of vision. It's very important that we understand who God is and our relationship with Him is right in order for us to be able to live out really and truly Ephesians. And that also informs our role as men, how to love our wives. We can't really exactly. love them unless we understand the love of God. Exactly. So if you just think about love, you, we tend to think that love is an emotion. It's more uh, something that I feel, whereas the true definition of love, the way Jesus intended it, is, is not just an emotion, but it's, it's, a, it's charity, it's what I do. You know, to the degree that I am able to see my wife or my spouse through his eyes, that determines everything in my relationship. Yeah. And we go through the scriptures in four different parts. Part one is God's design for man and woman. Part two is godly roles for husband and wife. Three is sex and intimacy within godly marriage. And also God's plan for divorce. You wanna have this important four part video series available for a suggested donation of $30 if you call our toll free prayer line at 866 Obey God. Again, that's 866 O B E Y G O D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. You too can have a godly marriage. Take action today. Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I want to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God. But we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? 
Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe versus Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. He is the intersection of church and state. Here is Dr. Chaps. You're watching PIJN News, and our next story today comes from Fox News, who reports that Bradley Manning, the traitor who is now in prison for disclosing classified documents, is not only claiming to be a woman, Chelsea Manning, but he has gone on a hunger strike to demand his own right to be castrated. Now, I'm not exaggerating this, I'm not making this up. In fact, the Obama administration has now approved his request to the US Army where he used to serve before his dishonorable discharge, approved his request to be castrated and so he's ended his hunger strike. Fox News reports that a transgender soldier imprisoned in Kansas for leaking classified information to the WikiLeaks website has said that he will end his hunger strike after the Army agreed to allow him to receive medical treatment for gender dysphoria. This according to the American Civil Liberties Union. Bradley Manning, who deceptively calls himself Chelsea, will begin the surgery that was recommended by his psychologist in April, the ACLU said. So he's gonna have surgery. And Manning began the hunger strike at Fort Leavenworth's military prison on Friday vowing to continue after he received better treatment. Manning said in a statement, quote, I am unendingly relieved that the military is finally doing the right thing. I applaud them for that. This is all uh, that I wanted for them to let me be me. I hope this sets a precedent for the thousands of trans people behind me, hoping they will be given the treatment that they need, end quote. Manning was arrested in 2010, back when he did call himself Bradley Manning as his parents named him. And he was later convicted in 2013 in a military court of leaking more than 700,000 secret military and State Department documents to WikiLeaks. Apparently they did not include Hillary Clinton's emails. Manning was an intelligence analyst in Iraq at the time and she, Chelsea Manning, as he now calls himself, is serving a 35 year sentence. Army spokesman Wayne Hall didn't immediately respond Tuesday evening to a request for comment. ACLU attorney Chase Strangio said that Manning should enjoy some peace, knowing that the medical care was coming. Here's a quote from the ACLU attorney, said quote, thankfully the government has recognized its constitutional obligation to provide Chelsea with the case castration that he needs. And we hope that they will act without delay to ensure that his suffering does not needlessly continue." End quote. That attorney, Strangio, said that it's troubling that Manning still faces administrative charges related to a suicide attempt on July 5th at the military prison. And wants the army to drop those charges and stop efforts to have Manning to cut his hair to male length standards and military standards. Even though he's serving in a men's prison and all the other men have short hair. ACLU filed a lawsuit in 2014 against the US Department of Defense over its refusal to treat Manning's gender dysphoria with castration. Well, that's the news. Our thanks to the ACLU for a lot of the facts in that report which was aired by Fox News. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. Now here you have this man. Young man, wanted to serve his country, good for him. Gave him a security clearance, big mistake, because he betrayed his country by giving away 700,000 military secrets to WikiLeaks? Okay, so he's being tried for that and then he takes a left turn. Then he decides that he's a woman because maybe he feels like a woman inside. But is that really a woman inside of him? Or is it a demonic spirit inside of him, deceiving him and telling him that he thinks 
he is a woman. Well, obviously, he's not a woman, he's a man. Genetically, physically, in every way, biologically, his DNA and his anatomy say that he is a man. He's born that way. His parents, the doctor who gave him birth, called him Bradley, said that he was a boy. And now he's deceived. So the demonic spirit was outside of him whispering, you feel like a girl inside. And then he had a choice. He could have said, no, I dismiss that demonic voice. I'm really a man. And he could go on with his life. Or he could contract through an act of his own free will to allow that demonic spirit to habitate inside of his mind, inside of his head, inside of his heart, and now he proclaims through his words, I am a woman. So once he made that voluntary choice to sin, the demon, demonic spirit was no longer outside of him, now it's inside of him manifesting through his behavior. And also through his lawyer's behavior. And also through the Obama administration's behavior. Now President Obama, apparently, through the US Army, is not only agreeing with this demonic spirit of lying, but now they're engaged in government castration of prisoners. Oh my gosh, I thought that was cruel and unusual punishment prohibited by the Eighth Amendment of the US Constitution. So when the ACLU says he has a, a constitutional right to this castration, no. The Constitution says the opposite, that you're not allowed to treat prisoners with cruel and unusual treatment. That's clearly a violation of his chemical desires or his constitutional rights. This man is not only confused, now the Obama administration has joined the demonic spirit in the deception, and now they're violating his constitutional rights by castrating him. That is not only unconstitutional, it's unbiblical. The Bible says this in Deuteronomy chapter 23, he that is wounded in the stones or hath his privy member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Let's pray about this. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we pray for Bradley Manning. We pray against the demonic spirit that is inside of him and inside of his lawyers and inside of the Obama administration. We pray against the spirit of lying and the spirit of cruelty that is now being, even if he's self-inflicted, his self-hatred has now become self-mutilation and manifesting in thoughts of suicide, self-murder. Father, we pray against the evil spirit inside of him that is tormenting this young man into hating himself. Father, we pray that you would have mercy on him. Forgive his sins through Jesus Christ. Cleanse him of all evil and self-hatred and give him a spirit of self-love because God, I know that you love this young man Pray that you reveal yourself to him and end his madness in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take one more short break. When we come back, homo fascists in Canada are suing a Christian activist for $104 million. This is PIJN News, defending your religious freedom. Dr. Chaps will be right back. Do you care about your family, about your children? Of course you do but you need to take action today because they're under attack. Sign a petition at PrayInJesusName.org to protect traditional marriage. Here are three specific petitions you can sign. Number one is to stop ENDA. This is the so-called Employment Non-Discrimination Act, but it's actually a bathroom bill that will punish Christians. It's introduced by a homosexual congressman, Jared Polis from Colorado, and it's really just a bathroom bill in disguise. Ladies and little girls, next time you go into the ladies room at any public restaurant, you might run into somebody who looks like this if ENDA becomes law. We need to stop this because here's the actual, actual language of the bill. They don't want you to read this. It says dresser grooming standards must be permitted for any employer who has an employee who's undergoing or may someday go undergo a gender transition after the time of employment. Well, this gives them permission to have the same dress or grooming standards to which they're transitioning. In other words, they don't even need a sex change. A man can go into a ladies room and assault you and your little girl if ENDA becomes law. And they'll punish the Christian business owner if he doesn't allow that. Number two petition you can sign is to stop the Homosexual Classrooms Act. That's being introduced by Senator Al Franken of Minnesota, actually to defund your public school if you don't 
force the teachers to promote homosexuality to all of the children as, as young as kindergarten in the guise of anti-bullying lectures. You're really just recruiting your kids into the gay agenda. Petition number three you can sign at PrayInJesusName.org is to defend traditional marriage. The 1996 Defense of Marriage Act is under fire, but it defines marriage simply between one man and one woman. Sign these petitions today. Go to PrayInJesusName.org and take action. Empowering you, the grassroots activist. Here is Dr. Chaps. Welcome back, I'm Dr. Chaps. One more story today, this is coming from barbwire.com, that homo fascists in Canada are now suing a Christian activist for $104 million because he allegedly caused them emotional distress by distributing pamphlets at a gay pride parade. By distributing Bible pamphlets? You mean in Canada they don't have freedom of the press? You can't pass around copies of scriptures at a parade on a public sidewalk in Canada? And this is causing the Christian activists to get a lawsuit for $104 million by homo fascists. According to barbwire.com, our friend Matt Barber reports that in early July, Christian freedom activist Bill Watcott and a small group of friends used a stealth procedure to infiltrate the Toronto Homosexual Pride Parade for the purpose of also called out Justin Trudeau and other Canadian politicians who criticize his elected officials. So what cut the Christian activist? He signed up, and you gotta catch this, deceptively called his own marching group the Gay Zombies Cannabis Association. And they, they wore full bunkers, the covert Christian activist dressing up like a gay zombie cannabis. <laughs> and he wears a costume, he marches, he's approved. Mission, their covert mission was actually to walk the parade tribute flyers to all of the people along the parade route with the gospel of Jesus Christ, that you can be free from your sins, you can be forgiven, and homosexual behavior is dangerous biologically. It's speaking the truth on a flyer, walk, while he's pretending to be part of the parade. So Bill Watt has success in his tactics, marches through the parade, hundreds if not thousands of gospel flyers, and was home for the day. And then he's hit with a lawsuit by the angry homosexual activists who organized the gay pride parade who felt like they had been misled. They've now hit Bill Watcott with a $104 million class action lawsuit. It's organized by a pro-gay lawyer named Douglas Elliott. He filed the lawsuit against the Christian activists and he told Daily Extra, quote, those who paid for his air for airfare or donated aeroplan miles to get him to Toronto, those who helped put him up in Toronto, the people who paid to print the pamphlets, anyone who helped him in any way could be on the hook for a hundred million dollars, end quote. So that's the news. Our thanks to Matt Barber with barbwire.com for that inspiring report. You know, we have had on this show, uh, one of Bill Watcott's friends, Peter LaBarbera, who's been to Canada, who was, I think, arrested at one point for distributing free Christian literature on the sidewalk of a secular university there. What is going on in Canada? Do they not have, I guess, under the British version of their constitution, they technically don't have the First Amendment in the same way that we do here in America, but certainly they have some kind of religious freedom. Certainly the Commonwealth of Her Majesty the Queen, who is the head of the Church of England, somehow would authorize printing the Bible and distributing it freely on the sidewalks in Canada. Has the Queen herself ceased to become a Christian? I'm confused by this. How would the courts allow this kind of frivolous lawsuit by the homofascist activists against the Christian who is distributing free copies of the gospel? There's something amuck with this, there's something terribly wrong, and Bill Watcott, you are a hero in this story. We discern upon you the spirit of Almighty God. Jesus said, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Dr. Chaps will be right back with more PIJN News. Take action today. 
Dr. Chaps needs you to sign an important online petition. Today, I want to invite you to sign a critical petition to defend innocent babies and to end abortion in America. On this show, we like to pray and petition God, but we also need you to take action today by petitioning Congress to stop the taxpayer-funded child killing, especially by defunding Planned Parenthood, America's number one abortion provider. Why are your taxes paying to murder innocent children in the womb? Well, if Congress would simply define personhood as life beginning at conception, we can reverse Roe v. Wade. Please join me today by signing this important petition to Congress. Visit PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign your petition today. Sign today's petition right now. Again, visit PrayInJesusName.org to sign our petition right now. How is your marriage doing? Ladies, would you like to learn how to get your husband to love you the way Christ loves the church? Men, would you like your wife to show proper respect? You know, there's a Bible way to have a godly marriage. I'm not saying I'm the expert, but we interview in a four-part video teaching series, a marriage and family ministry expert, Vince Dacchioli. And we go through the scriptures in four different parts. Part one is God's design for man and woman. Part two is godly roles for husband and wife. Three is sex and intimacy within godly marriage. And also God's plan for divorce. You wanna have this important four part video series available for a suggested donation of $30 if you call our toll free prayer line at 866 Obey God. Again, that's 866 O B E Y G O D. Or visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. Thank you for watching. Please donate when you visit PrayInJesusName.org. The Bible says in Matthew 6, when you give to charity, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. But when you give in secret, God will reward you openly. God bless you in Jesus' name. We'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.